crazy, crazy, crazy day yesterday. Um, super busy from the start of the day to the end of the mm -hmm. day, finishing off with having a group of um, couples that we mm -hmm. actually share the Audacity of Marriage book with them. That's our book um, that talks about all the difficulties that we went through in our marriage. Yep and how we overcame. And so each chapter, we're kind of covering that with couples. And from that, I pulled out a lot of really good nuggets, like just from hearing other people's responses to the chapters. Yeah, and I think that's one of the benefits of being in a group because oftentimes you have your own story and you look, thing, look at things through your own lens, but when you hear what other people are going through, either it confirms, okay, my spouse really isn't crazy. Yeah. There are other people who have some of the same characteristics and challenges and really it, it provides hope because I'm not alone and I'm not alone by myself yeah. struggling. Other people are going through similar yeah. things and some have overcome it. Some are on their way to overcoming it. So it kind of gives you a sense of what's going on in people's relationships. Yeah, and, and it's deep because it's it's our story. The whole book is our story, but in each chapter, it just basically gives concepts. And here's mm -hmm. what we did yeah. to get out of our trouble. Trouble. Here's what we applied. Literally, step by step, everything that we did. And we didn't really have a clear path. We were like searching. We went and became certified coaches to yeah. save our own marriage. We did all these things to fix our marriage. And so then we put it in the book along with our story. So people in there get to read what we went through and then see, okay, this is what they did to get out of the situation. So they can really apply it to their core issues. And what I thought was cool is yesterday when I, when I was hearing everybody talking, it triggered some thoughts inside of me about where I could still improve. So even though it's my story and we did it, hearing other people's issues helped me reflect on, oh, here's an opportunity for growth. Yeah. So one cool thing that came out of it was that Hassani has always been very, very transparent. It's easy for him. He can open up his heart with no problem and share what's really on his mind. And not so much for me. I really don't come from that cut of cloth and it's harder for me to just be vulnerable. And so what kept on ringing in my ear was vulnerable, being vulnerable. And so um, it was a few months ago that he came to me mm. and wrote this whole thing out. Share yeah. a little bit about what it was. Yeah, so basically uh, I lead a group of men and we talk about being more transparent and more vulnerable. And really it's about being naked, right? We have no problem becoming physically naked, right? But to become emotionally naked is a whole nother journey. And so there's a lot of thoughts and feelings and just things going on in our hearts and our minds that we don't take the time to open up because men have been socialized not to do it. You know, men don't lean on emotions and feelings. They lean on logic and, 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 and reasoning. And so I, in essence, wrote my pit story, the pit that we as men get stuck in that keep us from having the best relationships and businesses and families or whatever the case may be. And so I took the time over about a week or so to really get deep, deep, deep down inside and I kind of unpacked every fear, every insecurity, every esteem issue, how I see myself, how it causes me to show up as a, as a husband, as a father, as a business owner, and how far I am from where I ultimately want to be. And it was, it took a lot. I mean, it took a lot to get me in a mindset to want to do it and then to read it. But I have built myself up over the last couple of weeks for it, and so I just, I, I wrote this long letter and I read, we drove into a, like an empty parking lot like 10.30 at night. I was like, what's wrong? <laughs> Cause you were like, you, like I didn't say anything, but you were like, come on, I need you to go for a ride with me. And I'm like, okay, and I was like, it was late. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, uh-oh, what, what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and I wasn't like revealing something catastrophic that happened that I need to tell her about, no. but I was, I was living from the inside out. Wow. And I kind of, I kind of, you know, intimacy means into me see. And so I allow her to see inside of my life from my own view and my own perspective. Yeah, and that was like humongous. And I was just like, some of the stuff as a wife, I perceived on my own, but then there was a lot of stuff mm -hmm. like, there's no way I could get inside his brain to understand that. There's no way I could ask a question to help him to reveal that to me. You know what I mean? Like how we as wives would be like, what are you thinking? Or how are you feeling? Or talk to me. And it's just like, well, I feel fine. Uh, I'm, I'm good. Are you happy? I'm happy. 
what could be better? And you know, we get we we go down this rabbit trail of trying to seek the answers to problems that haven't been verbalized or something that's hidden that you know but you don't know. And so for him to write that and it was so transparent, it was like he emptied his whole soul. And I could have never asked questions like this to understand how he feels as a man, how he feels as a husband, how he feels as a father, um, as a friend, you know, business stuff. Like, it was just so revealing and so transparent. And I was just like, man. And so last night when we were talking and the conversation came up about knowing your, you know, dwelling with your spouse in knowledge. Yeah. I was just like, man, I can dwell with him in knowledge because he's kind of, he's given me the tools. He has literally opened up his whole heart and given me the tools, but I don't know that he could do that with me. Like he has, he always talks about the book of Danielle, which is his, I guess, study of me and notes that he's taking and conversations. He records everything. Like there's all these recordings of conversations that we've had, deep conversations about what we need to do as parents and how we're growing our business and how this affects our marriage and all the stuff that is important. Um, he keeps notes on. I, I don't, I'm always like, it's all up here. It's probably not all up here, but a lot of it is, right? <laughs> so. But I have never myself taken a week, because it took him a week, to actually go deep within and, and open up my spirit and pour out everything so that he can dwell with me in knowledge. And so yesterday, I made the commitment to do that. And I'm excited about that because, once again, intimacy, right? So you can know your spouse to the degree that they allow you to know them. Yeah. But we all, like somebody once said, we, we have a public life, a private life, and a secret life. So when you're out in the world, when you're at work, people know your public life, your public persona, what you show on Facebook is your public life. But then your private life is shared amongst those who live with you, right? Your very closest friends. So they know a level of you that nobody else knows. But then you have your secret life, and your secret life is what the people who are in your private world don't even know about. And so it's, in essence, making yourself completely vulnerable. Now think about it, vulnerability. Like, if, if I stripped all of your clothes off right now, whether you're a man or a woman, the first thing you're going to do is this, right? You're, you're going to cover up your most private parts, right? And so becoming emotionally vulnerable means exposing your woundedness, exposing your weaknesses, exposing your most private parts, and it takes you some time to get there. Like, you've got to get out of your own way, because the fact of the matter is, we don't want to tell our deepest fears, our deepest failures, right. our insecurities, because as a man, I'm supposed to be a certain way. Right, and You're tell the book, because we want to definitely give credit to the author of the book. So it's a, there's a phenomenal book called The Warrior Book. Yes. Uh, it's about five, six hundred pages. It's a hundred dollars, but it's an incredible it, book. Because I get quick notes. <laughs> it's an incredible book, <clears throat> and so the, the reality is, you have to get real with yourself, because many of us are wearing masks, right? We come into relationships wearing a mask. We talk about all the time how you put your best foot forward because you want your partner to see the best of who you are, but you're hiding the other foot with the crooked toe, the bunions, and the corns, because that represents the worst of who you are. Now, the the reality is. If you're close enough, you're going to expose your good side and your bad side. And sometimes your spouse is just waiting for you to admit what they can see already. That's true. So the point yeah. was, when I was reading my pit story, some of it she knew. Yeah. She was like, I'm glad you finally see what I've always well, seen. I, and, not that you came like or, that. Or that I'm just glad that you acknowledge it to exactly. me. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And I think there are stories that we tell ourselves. And I think a lot of us are trying to hide from ourselves. Like we're trying to push away a, a, a piece of our past or certain aspects of our of our personality that we don't like so therefore we hide them we don't want to acknowledge them and so we lie we deceive we yeah. we, 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 we de all types of things yeah. we just more than deceiving you we deceive ourselves we, we do because we will lie and believe, we'll tell ourselves a lie oh, yeah. and believe our own That's lie right. and a lie told <laughs> a thousand times is more powerful than the truth told once man and so we keep lying to ourselves yeah. and that's the whole point as men as women we need to stop lying mm. stop lying and live in your authentic truth because when you live in your truth you're free yeah and there was a level of freedom that came when I shared that with wow. her, I felt, well, maybe, I would imagine, hopefully, you felt a little bit closer to me after me unpacking all I did. I felt like, I felt like, 
You know, if I had come to you with this stuff, saying, hey, this is what I observe in you, I feel like before I thought you'd be defensive with me, like you would buck, you would shoot it down, you would not acknowledge it or whatever. But because you acknowledge it to me, I don't have to bring it up. I don't have to say anything. It's it's like it's like we're bonded. It's like mm -hmm. it's like we truly get to be one. Like it, it's it's transparency. And you know, we're just different. Like we're just different. In addition to like lying to each other and having that issue of not being able to be your authentic selves, like we are just different and we process things differently. Okay. Hold it.